Today I'm going to talk about being a self-taught artist, what it takes to be one, what kind of skills you need to develop to be one, talk about the pros, the cons, is it really for you, and give you some conclusion. To do that, I'll talk about my personal experience and how I learned what I learned. So anyways, while I do that, I'm going to be sculpting D.Va from Overwatch in the background. I'm gonna start by defining what self-taught is, because, you know, for the purpose of this video, I think it's best if we're on the same page, since it can be seen in many different ways. So the way I'm gonna talk about being self-taught is how it's generally seen. As someone who doesn't go to an art school, or someone who doesn't receive official training from a mentor, that's basically someone who's at home, who's learning through videos, through books, which, you know, technically, yeah, they're learning through someone, but they don't really have a guide. No one's telling them what to do. No one's creating a schedule for them. They have to do it by their own. You know, they're basically the, they're the master of their own time, which uh, in a way makes them self-taught, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's basically hardcore mode instead of medium, you know, like when you're playing you, you get the point let's i'm gonna just jump into my personal experience okay so a lot of you know that i did go to university but the one i went to is more of a management school we didn't really have art classes i did get some introduction to 3d modeling softwares like 3ds max and maya which i don't even use uh, especially on the channel well actually never uh but yeah we nothing art related you know i didn't really learn how to sculpt characters uh, i probably had one week of sculpting in zbrush in five years so just to give you an idea anyways as for drawing a lot of you might already know this i do draw i posted some of my work on my channel some on twitter some on instagram you know instagram stories go follow <coughs> so yeah art classes uh didn't have them uh drawing classes uh, didn't have them either so kind of had to learn on my own and Here's the interesting thing. When it came to learning how to draw and sculpt, my approach for each one was a bit different. As for drawing, I mainly relied at first on books, so things like fundamentals of art, like anatomy, uh, perspective, color and light theory, composition, all that kind of good stuff. And then I'd practice, apply what I learned, and learn from my mistakes. As for sculpting, it was a bit different because, you know, I sculpt in Blender mainly on the channel and at that time, there weren't really any channels that covered that. So I kind of had to learn how to use that part of the program on my own. And as for sculpting characters specifically, well, I mainly just looked at reference and sculpted what I saw and then learned from my mistakes and do it again. But here's the thing, that's not enough. The reason it worked for me is because a lot of what I learned through drawing, you know, the fundamentals of art like anatomy, translated to sculpting. And that's why my approach was a bit different. I want to make something very clear here. It's very important to learn from other people, their knowledge. That's really gold, you know, years of experience condensed into one book or a video or whatever. That's vital, but it's also just as important to learn things by your own, as in trial and error, observing, and not necessarily always looking for answers through others. Because the things you learn through that are things no one can teach you. All right, let's talk about a few things that you need to develop when you're a self-taught artist. Now, the word develop here is very important because these are things you get throughout your journey as a self-taught artist. You don't necessarily have them right from the start. So the first thing is a never give up mentality. Listen, when you start, you're always gonna have the question, where do I start, right? I get it, it's a valid question. No one, no one showed you the way. And that's the whole point of being self-taught. You kinda have to figure that one out on your own. So look, there's a learning curve at first, you gotta get the ball rolling, and once you do, it gets a lot easier. But you're still gonna fail a lot, which is why you need a never give up mentality. And that takes us to the second point, patience. You need to take your time, you, you know, no rush, believe in your effort, believe that you are in control of your results. You have to believe that, because if you don't, then you won't have the motivation to continue. Which takes us to the third part, which is keeping your motivation in check. This is not something that just happens, all right? There are things you can do in your life that helps you stay motivated and things that you can avoid so that you don't get demotivated. Now, I can't really get too much into this because it really deserves a video on its own, but basically, I don't know, do stuff like joining art communities, right? Be around people that do the same thing so that it motivates you. Have goals, you know, short-term goals, mid-term goals, long-term goals. You know, get inspired. If movies gets you inspired, then watch movies. If watching your favorite artist works, work online gets you inspired then do that whatever works for you also take care of other aspects of your life it's not only about art it's about your health it's about your sleep your if you're tired you won't be as motivated to work as if you're refreshed right so 
a lot of things you can do to keep your motivation in check. Now, the next thing you need is discipline. And here's the thing, these are not specifically in order, but discipline is one of the most important things. When we were kids, we were probably disciplined by someone, by our parents, by our school. You know, we had to go to class, do our homework, sleep at a specific time, eat our meals, that kind of stuff. Now, when you're being a self-taught artist, you have to discipline yourself. You have to create your own schedule. Wake up at a specific time so that you can be productive throughout the day. You have to be punctual. You have to be efficient. This is very, very important. The next skills you need to have as a self-taught artist is learning how to learn observation and critique, specifically self-critique. Obviously, these are skills that you need as an artist in general, but when you're self-taught, when you're at home working by your own, these become more than vital. You can't really advance without them. Anyways, these three points are more or less covered in a video that I have which is called The Scientific Way to Improve Your Art Fast, How to Practice and Remember Efficiently. A lot of cool information in that video really gets into that and more, so I'll add a link in the description below or as a card and you can watch that video after you finish this one. Next we have creativity. You have to find ways to practice, to learn, to have fun. You have to be creative in everything when you're on your own because things can get boring really fast. You know, you, you're not working with classmates, you don't have projects assigned by people, so you have to assign the projects yourself. You just have to have, you have to be creative. Find ways to make your work fun. And uh, last but not least, you have to be flexible. You have to be able to adapt to any situation because no matter how much you plan things, things never go the way you expect. So if you don't adapt, you'll end up quitting before you know it. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of being a self-taught artist as opposed to going, for example, to an art school. Now here's the thing, it really depends on the situation. It depends on the kind of art school you're going to. It depends on what kind of you know, self-taught artist you are, your personality, all of that stuff. But if you take a look at it in a general sense, in an art school, you got a professor, you got someone to guide you, to help make you understand what to learn, when to learn, to, to give you critique on your work. You're also forced to follow a certain amount of hours per day. So it kind of forces you to do the mileage to work if you're not disciplined. You're also around art students. You're in an environment that helps motivate you in most cases. And, you know, hopefully there's also a healthy competition going on, which will help push you forward. There are also connections. You're making connections with other art students, with teachers, professors, with maybe some people from the industry, which could help you find a job. So all of that stuff. But as I said, it depends on the situation because as a self-taught artist, you might have more time to make a name for yourself online, which also opens up doors to a lot of opportunities. Other benefits I can think of for self-taught artists on the spot are things like how you get to learn at your own term, at your own rhythm, you know, there's a sense of freedom. Some people might prefer that and some people might not, so it really depends on you. And there are other things like how you get to focus on subjects that you want to learn and that will help you improve, instead of having to learn a bunch of things, which could be a good or a bad thing, because you might ignore subjects that are very important for you to improve as an artist. But again, uh, you know, let's face it, in school we learn a lot of different subjects and they're not all as important to one person as they might be to another. So again, you get this freedom as a self-taught artist, you get to learn in a different way, you might end up getting different results. You know, for example, your style might be different from students who go to the same university because they are influenced by classmates, by the teachers or professors that are teaching them. So all of that stuff has to be taken into account. And I don't think one is better than the other. For example, as a self-taught artist, you are forced to develop other skills that you might not be forced to develop as an art student. So you're forced to make your own schedule, to become independent, to, to become disciplined, to learn how to learn, to observe better, all of that stuff that I talked about earlier. That's something you're definitely forced to learn as a self-taught artist, which every artist can benefit from. So at the end of the day, which is better is, well, the answer, it depends. It depends on you. It depends on the situation, it depends on the art school, and the grass is just greener on the other side. Either way, you're gonna have struggles that you have to deal with, and yeah, that's, uh, that's my opinion on the subject. 
Hopefully this gives you a good idea on what it is like being a self-taught artist. Now this obviously is my personal experience, so you can always go online and check on other artists' experience on how they you know, became self-taught and uh, what they think about it, or maybe art students who went to art school and what they think about that. So that you can make a conclusion whether this is for you. And if you're already a self-taught artist, hopefully uh, the things I talked about can help you move forward from here on. Either way, if you have any questions on the subject that I didn't cover in the video or if you'd like to share your own perspective, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below and also don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel for more fun and educational videos and I'll leave you guys with some renders of D.Va from Overwatch. I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the next one.